Welcome back. Uh, this is our third Gaussian plume video. And in this one, we're going to go over where the dis dispersion coefficients uh, in the Gaussian plume model come from. So those are the ones that, again, de describe. They're essentially standard deviations in the y direction and standard deviations in the z direction. And they are, um, uh, yeah, they are, as we're going to shortly see, they're a function of your downwind direction x. So here's what those. Uh, coefficients look like plotted up. So here's our, uh, we'll start with the horizontal dispersion because it's the simpler of the two. There's some downwind distance here in meters, and this is on a log scale. And then here's our sigma, which again is kind of the standard deviation of the amount of lateral diffusion or dispersion. And that is again on a log scale. So this is actually what's described as a power law relationship. So it'll be you know, uh, sigma is going to be x to some raised to some power. Um, and we'll see that here that there's actually a bunch of parallel lines. So this is a situation somewhat analogous to what we had um, in our soil model, where we have a diffusion amount of uh, diffusion, but that diffusion is now going to be a function of other things. And we see that there's these letters A through F. And what those letters A through F actually describe are, are different levels of atmospheric stability. Uh, and so these lines are roughly parallel. And we start from the lowest line, F, which describes the most stable atmospheric conditions. And when the atmosphere is most stable, we have the, the slowest rate of lateral movement. And when the atmosphere is most unstable, this class A, we have the, the largest amount of lateral dispersion. Uh, but we see the slopes are basically parallel. So that the amount of lateral diffusion uh, increases uh, as the atmosphere gets un more unstable, but it just increases as a constant. We contrast that with the vertical dispersion, where the things fall out in the same order. You have no more vertical dispersion under unstable conditions and less vertical dispersion under stable conditions. Uh, but those slopes are, are increasing. So what we see is as the atmosphere becomes more unstable, we get a predominantly vertically mi mixing situation. Uh, when the atmosphere is very stable, we get a pro predominantly horizontal uh, mixing situation. So you can kind of see that by, by first looking at this you know, first, first distance class, we can see that uh, a, a, you know, a very short distance downwind that most of what we're seeing is uh, horizontal diffusion, the diffusion for all classes tends to be higher in the horizontal. Uh, and for the most stable class, this class F, kind of a brown line, that horizontal dispersion is always bigger than the vertical dispersion. By contrast, if we see in the most unstable condition, you know, we start with the horizontal dispersion, but it quickly, that, that blue line quickly becomes at a, you know, for any value of X is higher. So you're going to see this more vertical mixing. And that makes sense because atmospheric stability is really a reflection of vertical mixing. The things that determine atmospheric stability are, are things that really de determine uh, how the atmosphere is mixing vertically. So under stable conditions, stable conditions are basically conditions defined by a lack of uh, vertical mixing and unstable conditions. Um, are defined by a, a high amount of vertical mixing. So mi that, that mixing of the atmosphere is truly a continuous process, but we're describing it in terms of uh, six discrete classes, uh, just for the sake of parameterization. So we can assign you know, parameters to each of these discrete classes, kind of using a lookup table. And here we see, again, A is the most unstable. Uh, D is neutral, so it's neither stable or unstable, and F is uh, a stable. So the atmosphere tends to converge. Uh, neutral is it tends to, you know, be, yeah, be neutral uh, and to unstable. And we see that the things that affect that stability are wind speed affects stability at all times, uh, and then in the day the stability is largely a reflection of incoming 
uh, solar radiation because that incoming solar radiation is going to heat up the ground and cause uh, convection. And then at the night, since there's no incoming solar radiation, the night is the stability at night is largely to cover, determined by cloud cover because that's going to again affect the amount of heat reflected back down to the ground. So in both cases, the um, the stability of the atmosphere is largely uh, being largely a reflection of the incoming radiation, but in the day that's incoming solar radiation and at night that's nighttime reflected cloud cover. And we see that um, the, the least stable atmospheric conditions are when we have uh, a lot of light and low wind speed, which is kind of surprising that low wind speed co corresponds to the most unstable. But that's because when the wind speed is low and you have a lot of light, you have a lot of convection. And as the wind speed increases, uh, you're kind of uh, dispersing that, that heating of, of the ground more quickly. Um, so as, because you're just heating the dispersant, heating the dispersing the amount that the ground is heating up more quickly, that actually makes uh, the atmosphere less unstable. And again, so uh, when there's less light, there's also going to be less heating and, and more stability. So for any wind speed class, uh, Longer, stronger light is less unstable, less light is more stable. So a bright sunny day with is uh, more unstable than a, a cloudy day, overcast day. And then, yeah. Cool. Okay. So if we look at that analytically, what we have for each stability class is we're going to have the same equation that the, the sigma, a standard deviation of the dispersion, uh, follows this power law AX, which again is distance down wind to exponent B. And you can look up what those A's and B's are in a table. And so the horizontal dispersion has a different set of coefficients than the vertical dispersion. When we look at the horizontal dispersion, we see that that exponent B is pretty much the same thing in all classes, that's that slope. Uh, but we see the intercept changing such a, that the dispersion is highest uh, under the um, unstable class and the, this lateral dispersion is the least, the intercept is the smallest under the uh, most stable conditions. We see the intercept kind of going in the opposite direction under the vertical, but that's because the exponents are changing uh, quite dramatically. Um, and to get the, if you're changing the slopes, uh, you have to adjust the intercepts in in pair to get things to go through, you know, ultimately to kind of converge down to zero at distance, a zero a distance approach is zero. Cool, so that kind of goes over the, the uh, dispersion component. So again, that dispersion is a function of atmospheric stability. More unstable causes more mixing, particularly more unstable causes more vertical mixing. And uh, that's a function of downwind distance. And downwind distance, again, is kind of a reflection of the fact that wind speed is effectively causing things to move downwind. Next, when the next video, we're going to pick up uh, an explanation of the effect of stack height.